Welcome to our first junior takeover of the year where our broadcast journalism class takes charge of Sun TV. We'll share our version of the show in preparation for taking it over next year. Our class started off strong by interviewing Sun students and faculty about hot topics impacting our school, community, and world. Let's take a look at their work. Hello, this is Amayma Yunus and Yoreli Rabadan reporting for Sun TV. We're covering Sun's mask policies where masks must be worn by all students and staff at all times. The only exception to not wearing masks is when you are outside of the building or doing any physical activities while social distancing. Today we asked students and staff if masks should be required to wear all year for fully vaccinated students. Knowing there's a controversy going around about mask policies. Let's, Let's take, take a look. A look. Um, yes, I think students should be required to wear a mask at all times, even when they're vaccinated. Vaccinated people can still carry the virus, they just don't get as sick from it. So therefore, if you're carrying the virus and someone is not vaccinated, you can give the illness to them. So I think as a safety precaution, we're going to be masked all year. And hopefully next year when we come back, we'll be, maybe be without them then. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, because it's just like for the protection of it. Like, even though that we're fully vaccinated, like, we just had to use a mask just in case. Okay. Thank you. I think if you're fully vaccinated, you should still wear a mask because you could still spread COVID and you're just, you're only vaccinated for yourself. Not everyone is vaccinated. I probably would go with yes, because it's still other people who are unvaccinated. So just to be on the safer side, I would probably recommend everybody keep their masks on. Okay, thank you. All right. Yes, because there's a bunch of students that share food and share their drinks. And it's really disgusting. Yes. Yeah. Because, like, you never know, like, if they might have a cold or not, and it could be dangerous to other students as well. Thank you. I think that they should, out of respect for everyone's like health and their surroundings, even though whether you're vaccinated or not, it's all for safety because you never know, you might still have it even with the double vaccination, but to keep them on just for everyone's safety. Because we can still catch COVID and, um, you know, it's just to be safe and a lot of people aren't vaccinated, so yeah. Thank you. Uh, I feel like they should be required to wear a mask all year because even like the disease, the disease right now is not really um like it's still really trying like like you can, like you can still give it to somebody else even if you have the the, the vaccine or not you know. Thank you for your time. I feel like even though you're fully vaccinated, you should still wear a mask to you know show that the school is a safe environment for everyone you know vaccinated or not. Welcome to Sun TV. This is Manny Villegas and Faith Palladio, providing you with our top stories for today, Devious Licks. A new trend where students who steal school property, such as water fountains, soap dispensers, etc. So, is it funny or is it getting out of hand? We went around asking students of Sun High School what their thoughts were on this new TikTok trend. Let's take a look. I haven't seen it personally like happen in our school, but like seeing it on TikTok and like through social media feeds, it's pretty funny. <laughs> like, things are running out for students and like they need to use these things and most of the things are not there for them to use. So I don't think it's a good idea. I thought that the name was funny at first and I didn't even know what it was. And then I found out at Taft, this school where my friends go, um, people are stealing things from the bathroom and calling it devious licks, and then no one's allowed to go to the bathroom anymore. And I'm glad that it's not happening at Sen. It's, it's basically thieving, right? You're robbing stuff, yeah. And I do not condone any acts of illegal uh, crimes, so I, I say it's really bad. I feel like it's very interesting. I'm not very liked it. Mm -mm. Um, I think it's like immature. I don't really think I've seen people participate like at Sen, but I'm sure like if it does happen, we should like, you know, definitely call their mom. I think it is a horrendous um, violent crime on our school council and it must be stopped. I think it's a really weird phrase, just something so like simple and destructive to just be named devious licks. It's just very weird to me. I don't think it's a good thing to do because like obviously you could get in trouble and everything. I don't know. Uh, if somebody gets caught, I don't know, like detention, I don't feel like it's that serious. It's a trend, like everybody's gonna participate in it. But you still, why is you stealing from school? I don't know. Yeah, that's not good, like, right. that's not good at all. Like, 
Y'all was taught better than that. Uh, I think it's awful. It's, uh, it's making me lose my faith in humanity and in uh, this generation. I think uh, it's one of those where people are getting celebrity status for doing something that's totally not just irresponsible, but something that is... Uh, you know, completely mindless and pointless, and it makes me question uh, Gen Z and why they do the things they do. Honestly, I feel it's kind of funny and stupid at the same time, because people start to get arrested in a second, so like... Hey Bulldogs, it's your new favorite Junior Sand TV anchor, Amna Siwats. With school finally in person, that also means our fall sports are back in season. CPS athletes are soon required to be fully vaccinated or have to take weekly COVID tests. We asked students and staff members what they had to say about this policy. Let's take a look. I think that's actually a really good policy considering the new variants and how fast COVID spreads and we need to keep all of our students safe and healthy. And with athletes, it's actually like a really good thing to do because they're always going to be like close to each other, touching each other, like doing all that. And you want to make sure that they're always going to be healthy. <laughs> um, I feel like it needs to happen. I'm an athlete myself and I feel like just to keep everybody around you safe and not to like have COVID and then spread it and now all type of sports teams are getting shut down. So I feel like it needs to happen. I think it's a very good idea. It's very important um, with like the Delta variant. It's important to keep everyone safe and whether you're fully vaccinated or not, at least get, getting tested every week is really important to keep the students and the staff safe. I mean, I feel like it's kind of important because, like, uh, the corona spreads fast and you need to know, like, who has it or you need to quarantine them as quickly as possible so that the whole school doesn't have uh, corona. Um, I think that it's a step in the right direction because even though we are back in person, COVID is still a major thing going on all around the world. So I think that testing each athlete weekly will help keep everybody safe and help make sure that there's no cross-contamination between schools. Yeah, it's probably something that I wouldn't want to do. Just because I don't have the vaccine don't mean that, you know, I have to get tested all the time. Because somebody could have COVID and they vaccinated too. Um, I think the key here is safety. And the safer we are, the less people that will get sick. So if you're not vaccinated, you're at a higher risk. Getting a weekly COVID test seems very reasonable to me to keep your teammates and your community safe. I feel like this makes sense, knowing damn well that there's so many people in this school and the fact that I mean especially knowing athletes since you guys are going to different schools to compete and all of that it makes sense to be safer than not because once you get sick you're not going to be having fun you're not going to be doing your sport like you want to that's a, that's too much you know you got to get tested every week I just feel like it's unnecessary you get tested like every other week like every two weeks but Every week is unnecessary. I mean, I understand why it's uh, going on because COVID is a real thing. And um, with teams coming in and out of stadiums and all of that, I think that people that aren't vaccinated should get tested weekly. I feel good about it. I actually think that they should have done it a while ago. Uh, they actually just pushed back the deadline because uh, they didn't have enough testers in place to handle the demand so get it together cps and let's uh let's do this let's protect our athletes let's enjoy a little verse with our resident sun tv poet pablo love also known as paul ott take it away pablo hello welcome to pablo love's poetry corner with your host, Pablo Love, I got a wonderful poem to share with you. It's called Imperfect Vision. Here it goes. Imperfections view to step aside and look around. What do you see? Trees on cracked soil, branches bent crooked, leaves full of holes, uh, clouds with wispy shapes, petals bleached by the sun. Art in, all are imperfections like the human race. Each face unique, all share the same faults. But we are more than that. Pablo Love, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. Hello Bulldogs, this is Paul Ott. We're here re uh, reporting for Sand TV on the issue of the email Ms. Baldwin sent out regarding whether or not Sand students should have homecoming court. Although the process of people decide if they wanted a homecoming or not, many of the students aren't feel like they were being excluded in homecoming due to the titles King and Queen. So the planning committee of homecoming changed these types to just 
Pokemon Court instead. So we decided to go around and ask their fellow Baldugs how they felt about this situation. Let's take a look. Uh, I believe that we should make it our goal to include as many people as possible. And if it is about gender identity, we could make it royalty, court royalty. If it's about uh, having a court versus not having a court, I definitely think it's up to student voice um, to kind of say what they, what they have. There's been a long tradition, but all traditions can be updated to make sure that everyone feels included. Great, thank you. I feel like as of now, in like 2021, people identify with more than just male and female, and I feel as though they should try to do something or come up with more titles to help people feel more included. Thank you for sharing. Um, I feel like a homecoming choir is like, you know, a fun activity, but if like other students want to like, maybe we could like title it something else, because I think it would be like fun to honor a student, but maybe we could change the title so it's like more fitting for everyone. Um, I feel like the homecoming court is fun, it's like part of the high school experience, but if there's some way to make it more gender inclusive or like not so like king queen like heteronormative, that'd be pretty cool. Thank you! The homecoming court is fun, but at the same time I feel like it should be more inclusive because not everybody um, relates to um, having their, what's it called? Their gender identity as female or male, so it should be more inclusive for sure. Okay, thank you. I think that there should still be a homecoming court, but we should make a new title that applies to like non-binary and gender fluid people so that everybody feels like included and welcome to participate in like that kind of nomination. So maybe just add like an extra title or two to make it more inclusive. Okay, thank you. I feel like having a quote unquote king and queen is uh, upholding the gender binary. And I feel like to be more inclusive to all our students here at Sen, like going non-binary or just calling it court or however you want to phrase it is a lot better for students. Do you support the idea Ms. Bowman was trying to go for? Yes, I do. Thank you for your time today. Hey Bulldogs, my name is Abby Alvarez. And Musi Arori here reporting for Sen TV. Since CPS students were approved to return back to the building in late August, there's been a bit of controversy in the air regarding SEN's procedural response to COVID. Such regulations like mask mandates, social distancing, which according to CPS is three feet, and mass sanitization have been implemented. But we wonder whether the population has said, believe it's enough. Hoping to start a necessary discussion, we decided to ask the students and staff at SEN High School how they feel directly. Let's check it out. All right, so my question to you is, how do you feel about SEN's response to COVID? Um, I think it's been good. I mean, we're, I feel like it's, we're, pre, we're changing things a lot. I mean, I know that we're, the safety, there's a safety team that I'm a part of on the union, this union that's pretty responsive to issues that people feel like they're facing. I'm really glad that the testing has started. I felt like that was a little late in the game, but I'm glad it's going. Any way that we can be more unified in our voice and our message that this is for the greater good i think would help Pu like public celebrations of vaccinations you know like we should be we should be celebrating each new vaccination vaccination that we get i think because we gotta i mean they all count uh, i feel like they're handling it well like we're, we're keeping socially distanced and like they enforce the rules like properly and like they're handling it well as um like for some cases they uh bring students home if they've been like contact tracing so like in that case they're keeping it uh well I i'd say the same thing i just add that uh i like the wipe down like of desks before class starts um i think for the most part it's pretty good and they've been doing a good job of like keeping things pretty safe but i think generally it's still uh kind of a risk to just have people going back to school already but you know, I mean, it feels relatively normal. Mm -hmm. I feel like SEN's response to COVID is doing well, but there are some things they need to fix, such as kids not wearing their masks correctly and people not feeling well and still attending school. I, I feel pretty safe, and especially since they have uh, posters on the wall explaining to wear a mask and what to do. It's actually kind of uh, nice and also bad sometimes because 
There are also some kids who really want to attend school in person, but they have to be sent quarantine. So I kind of feel bad for the rest of the kids who are quarantined. So I wish, but I wish for them to get better and feel better so they can come back home. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think that sin can change in order to make it better? Sometimes they just need to contact the people that test them for COVID. So yeah, like communication needs to be better. Yeah, communication should be better between the students and the teachers and the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, Sam's response to COVID has been very responsible, actually, and effective. They've taken, you know, careful precautions and, you know, laying out where you should stand, making sure that everybody is six feet apart, and they've, you know, enforced that we wear our masks daily. Mm -hmm. And overall, how safe do you feel at San and why? Uh, I feel very safe because, you know, seeing that they take COVID very seriously, it makes me feel safe and, like, everybody cares. They're doing an okay job, but I don't know what's going to happen when all of us have to go in the lunchroom. So. I think Sun is being pretty good about it. You know, we have our masks on, hopefully at all times. Outside, you can take them off. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good response. We're all safe. Uh, they've done a decent job at covering the basics, but they could very much do a lot more, especially to prevent COVID from spreading among students. Uh, response is reliable and efficient. They could definitely do better. I feel like there's a lot of students that get grouped together, especially in the hallways. They take off their masks and they're not very considerate of the regulations. Hello, this is Lewis Haynes Myers. I am Nelly Secundino. Reporting for Sun TV with today's Person on the Street video about how the bathroom policies are leading to many of the bathrooms being locked. When we walked around the school this week, we found about half the bathrooms were inaccessible for students. We interviewed people both inside and outside during seven period lunch to get some insight on how on how <laughs> the newly enforced policy is affecting Sun students. Let's, Let's take, take a look. look. Um, we had to shut down the bathrooms on the columns because kids were hanging out with them, hanging out instead of going to class. And I can never figure out why people would want to be in the bathroom over class. But so we've got the center bathrooms. Um, we need to keep people moving in them and we need to keep sure we've had some kids who aren't feeling well who hang out in the bathrooms and we have a nurse's station and a care room. Both are much better options. So if you're not feeling well, I'd prefer you go there. Um, I wish they would open more bathrooms because there's only like five that are open. Is that all? I don't know. Thank you so much for your time. I would not have the bathrooms locked at all times. I think they're, we could, like, they could do different security like measures and different ways to like make sure kids aren't doing things they're not supposed to in the bathrooms without having the bathrooms locked all the time and having kids who just need to use the bathroom struggle to just use the bathroom. Um, so I will change it back to all gender because you never know if the students are really comfortable sharing bathrooms with like the female and the males because you never know what really goes on in there but at the same time they don't know you don't know if they're like questioning their sexual sexuality whatever and yeah oh I think it's really annoying because like sometimes you just need to pee but your class is like over here but the bathroom is like all over there and the teacher's gonna be like mm, why are you so late well I just had to pee like what can I say you gotta pee thank you so much for your input on this topic <laughs> you're very welcome um, I really think it's unfair that they're closing a lot of the gender-neutral bathrooms uh, for reasons like smoking or vaping because uh, a lot of people do need that and the fact that they're taking them away just because some people are ruining it is really unfair because some people that's their only bathroom if you close all of them they have nowhere to go. Um, for me, I think that it's more about location. Um, I'm really lucky that my classroom is right in between um, this bathroom here and then that bathroom over there. So I have one for girls, one for boys. Um, so I haven't seen too many uh, issues in my class, but I definitely can understand if you're placed somewhere where you're far away, it would probably take a little bit more time. Okay, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Right, so um, with the bathrooms in the main hallways available, I have noticed that students take longer, obviously, to get to the bathrooms because they're further away. Our bathroom is normally right there, um, right, right the hallway or downstairs for the boys' bathroom. So, yeah, normally, like, 
I noticed that students have to take an extra like couple of minutes just to travel. And I'm sure just to like wait in line because there's only a few bathrooms available. Um, I think it can kind of cause some issues because when students are trying to go from class to class, and that is their one opportunity to use the bathroom. If it's locked, then now they have to use the bathroom once they come into my class, for example. So then, while we are trying to do activities in class, then we often have a problem with people getting up during the whole class period to use the bathroom. Thank you for your time. I would say, since I actually just learned that a lot of the bathrooms are locked, and so students are needing to travel further um, than they normally would, I think, um, it sounds to me like it is affecting students from what I've heard. So um, yeah, I know that I'm real lucky that there's a bathroom really close to 361. That's like a, a gender neutral bathroom. So I know a lot of the students use that one and it tends to be open. So that works out well for us. Um, but I do feel like we should listen to the students if it is having an impact on them uh, emotionally and also um, in their classes academically. Um. In my opinion, I don't think they need to be locking up all these damn bathrooms because, uh, I'm sorry, people need to go and we just came back and you guys open schools for a reason. We need to use the bathroom on every freaking floor. Like people's schedules are everywhere, like all over the place. I also think that um, the all gender bathrooms should be opened as well. I, I have no idea why they're closed compared to like all these other bathrooms. Like it's just kind of all over the place and it's an inconvenience to your students that you care about so dearly. That's all the time we have for this episode. We appreciate you giving us your time. As always, until next time we see you for our junior takeover, toots magoots!